Hello, good evening, and welcome to Crestview High School, where tonight on WOSN, we've got a Northwest Conference matchup between the visiting Columbus Grove Bulldogs and the homestanding Crestview Knights. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Scott Nurse, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from Crestview. And Scott, uh, two teams on two different paths. I'm sure Crestview would like to rewrite their 2022 season. They started out 3-0, now 3-3. Three three. They've lost three straight, but they've got an opportunity tonight to, to grab a win here against the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Well, absolutely, and this is always a big game in the Northwest Conference. It's a rivalry game. These teams get up for playing each other, so it ought to be interesting. And now it's time to take a look at our keys to the game. Scott, what stands out to you that's most important for these two squads tonight? I've got three keys tonight. Number one, lean on me. Offensively, these two teams are virtually equal. I think to win this game, you have to lean on the defensive unit. Columbus Grove only gives up 197 yards a game, while Crestview has given up 308 yards per game. The challenge goes out to Crestview's defense to rise up. Number two, I'll pass. Columbus Grove has a decided advantage in the passing game. 466 yards on the season to Crestview's 106 yards total through six games. The Crestview offense is a run focus, which allows Grove's defense to load up in the box and stop the run. I think Crestview has to connect on a few passes if they want to win this game. And then third, one team, one goal. Lots of tradition in this game. It's a great rivalry. This game will carry a lot of weight as we get closer to the playoffs especially for Crestview. I think you got to bring a lot of emotion and fire, rally as a team and play as one collective unit to get the win. Focus, effort, and team play. Two of the better teams in the Northwest Conference traditionally over the course of the last 10 to 15 years about to tango tonight here in Convoy. We'll see how it goes when we come back for first quarter action. Uh, for Scott Nurse, I'm Garrett Searight. We'll be right back here on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School. We're here on WOSN. We're getting set for week seven high school football action in the Northwest Conference between the three and three Crestview Knights and the four and two Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Crestview won the coin toss, selected to defer. So Columbus Grove will begin tonight's ball game with the football as Hayden Perot ready to kick off. It's a wobbler to that far sideline. And Trenton Barraza will watch it roll out of bounds. A we'll good starting field position for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs for their first drive of the night. Yeah, and this will be interesting to see, Garrett. As you can see there, the last meeting was September 3rd, 2021, and Grove won 38 to nothing in Columbus Grove. And the Bulldogs, they've won four in a row here in this series. Uh, uh, Crest, you won in five facing Columbus Grove the last five C or one and four I should say the last five years. So the Bulldogs will start at their own 35 yard line with this offensive drive. Brenton Renner will be the quarterback. Trenton Barraza lines up to his left. And Garrett, I think this matchup, Crestview's defense, Columbus Grove's offense is key to this game. Shep Hawker gets the jet sweep, has to reverse field, and he is gobbled up. Jarrett Harding coming up from his safety spot to make the tackle. Take a look at tonight's officials. Appreciate them coming out and giving us uh, their Friday night. Yeah, the referee tonight is Terry Kniebel, the umpire Greg Joseph, line judge is Gary Ebaugh, head linesman Ashley Konoff, and back judge is Kenny Dorn. So second and long upcoming here for Columbus Grove. Second and 13 to be precise is Renner in the pistol with Barraza behind him. A.J. Schaefer lined up as the wing back. Barraza gets the handoff, bounces it out. He is gobbled up once again. That Crestview defense comes to play early here, Scott. Well, like I said, I think they're really going to have to do that because uh, the offense has struggled a little bit, so the defense has got to keep them in the game, got to keep Columbus Grove's offense in check. Donovan Wraith has stopped for Crestview to push Columbus Grove back to make it third and 12 with the ball at their own 33-yard line. So two negative plays right off the bat for the guys in white. Schaefer and Hawker to the right side of your screen as Renner will line up in the shotgun. Barraza to his left. Renner back to pass, looking, going deep down the near sideline, and it's nearly intercepted by Jared Harding. Had it right in the bread basket and couldn't hold on. Nonetheless, it looks like Crestview forces a three and out uh, in, a, in a punt situation here uh, on their first defensive possession. Yeah, I think if he intercepts that, it's about the equivalent of a punt. Uh, as a matter of fact, 
uh, you know, it would have been diff more difficult for the return. So probably worked out the best for Crestview. So Brenton Renner, who just threw that long pass, also is the punter for Columbus Grove. Jared Harding, who nearly intercepted that pass, is back deep to return for Crestview. As the punt is away, it'll bounce at about the 41 yard line. Spieth on the return and a big pop there by Loud Nachmuddy. And that is where Crestview will begin their first drive. So the Knights got to feel pretty good about that first defensive stand there, Scott. Yeah, and I like this uh, punt coverage. A nice stick to kind of set the tone here early on. You see that uh, was number 13, Antonio Gray, it looks like. So Crestview with a backup quarterback, Levi Grace, will be in the pistol. Isaac Klein to his right as they'll start their first possession of the night after the injury to Carson Hunter has pressed Levi Grace, a 5'6", 140-pound junior, into action as they'll send Harder in motion. Klein, the carry on the first offensive play for the Knights. A.J. Schaefer cuts him down from behind, but it's a gain of about three yards there for Crestview on first and ten. Uh, Grove in that familiar 4-3 defensive scheme, cover two, two deep safeties. Does a pretty good job there on first down of limiting uh, limiting the run to about two, three yards. So second and seven here for the Knights. Yes, Grace joined in the backfield by Klein. Harding lines up as the wing, and he's the man in motion. High snap and a fumble, and the ball's loose. It's scooped up by the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Kyle Lathrop is going to take it to the house. A big defensive play by Kyle Lathrop. Just pounced on the football and scooped and scored. We got a big guy touchdown at Crestview. Yeah, and if you're if you're Crestview, that's not how you wanted to start this game for sure. Just a little mishandle there, and Lathrop picks it up, and he's got wheels. He does. He takes it to the house. 6-0, Columbus Grove. Take a look at this Lotics Jewelry's instant replay. The ball just laying there for Lathrop. He scoops and scores. We got a thick six for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Man, if you're a defensive lineman, that, you love that, you know? So Shep Hawker will line up for the extra point. The snap back to hold us down. The kick is up. Kick is through the uprights and good. Hawker drywall scoreboard reads Columbus Grove 7, Crestview nothing with 9.39 to go here in this first quarter. We'll step aside on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Crest Unites is Carey Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in youth programs and communities. Scott, we talked about how uh, impressive that first defensive stand was for the Crest Unites. I got to think Columbus Grove feels pretty good about their first couple defensive plays as well. Well, absolutely. Of course, you know, that that's a gift. And, you know, in games like this, you cannot have turnovers, especially if your offense hasn't really produced, um, you know, a whole lot of uh, points and yardage. So you got to take advantage of every possession that you have and obviously Crestview did not on that first possession. Well and Crestview head coach James Lawson has told us they needed to steal possessions here uh, against Columbus Grove and probably not real thrilled that they gave a possession away there that resulted in, a, in an immediate score. Isaac Klein on the return here for the Knights deep inside his own five yard line he's got a long way to run breaks a tackle gets out to about the 25 yard line so Crestview will set up shop there for their second drive. Get another look at that Lodix Jewelry instant replay. Great yeah. look at it. And Klein's got some wheels there. That he does. Five touchdowns on the ground does the junior running back. So Chris Hughes starts at their own 26-yard line. First and 10. After the big play by the Columbus Grove defense. Knights break the huddle, and we talked, that you know, it's a backup quarterback, Levi Grace, uh, in for the Knights, and not sure how many, you know, meshes and practice reps he got with Isaac Klein, but uh, costly turnover there on the last play for the Knights as they'll send Parker Spieth in motion and turn and fire it to him. Spieth in the open field, slips one tackle to a 32-yard line before he's brought down by Kylan Mays on the stop for Columbus Grove. Well, and head coach Andy Schaefer said that, you know, finding the mix in the defensive backfield of guys that can support the run but also be athletic enough to cover the pass. That's a challenge for them this year. 
and uh, they lost Jackson Schrader and Luke Kaufman. They were perfect examples of those type of players. And you can see Crestview, uh, as, as I thought, would be a key to the game. Looks like we've got the football. Looks like we've got an injured Bulldog, Zach Reynolds, junior safety down for Columbus Grove. So we'll step aside as well. 7-0, Columbus Grove leads Crestview on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard built by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit them at hawkerdrywall.com to see how they can help you. Zach Reynolds helped to the sideline at Columbus Grove safety. So second and four upcoming here for the Crest Unites. There's Levi Grace in the pistol with Klein behind him. Harding, the man in motion. Fake the handoff. Grace looks to pass. Nearly intercepted by Columbus Grove. Grace's pass. Knocked down by number 13, Antonio Gray. Antonio Gray on the coverage for Columbus Grove. Just sub it in for Zach Reynolds and, and makes a, a big play there on second and four. Yeah, he had a nice stick on the kickoff return and then uh, makes a nice play there defensively. So third and four upcoming here for the Knights. Under nine minutes to go on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Harding the man in motion once again, and they'll hand off to Klein. Klein barrels ahead, didn't get the first down marker as he was swallowed up by Columbus Grove's defense. And he's gonna be about a yard and a half shy. Take a look at this Lodix Jewelry replay. Yeah, good hard run there. I like the little sidestep. Uh, he, he saw that the hole that he was originally going to was, was covered, so he slid to his left there. Still just a little bit short for the first down. So Garrett Eggleston, or Garrett, excuse me, Garrett Yinger on to punt for Cressu on fourth and one. See if they try anything funny here. Garrett averages 32.7 yards per carry. They snap it to Isaac Klein. He barrels ahead for the first down. The fake punt by Cressu, and I, I wondered, Scott, on fourth and one, getting that close to uh, to midfield, and, and you thought about, you know, hey, we've got to steal some possessions. You knew, hey, <laughs> we might be some funny business here, and they snap it right to Isaac Klein, and he needed to get to the 36 and got just that much. Yeah, nice job, nice hole that opened up there. A uh, little bit surprised, though, on their own 35-yard line to try that this early in the game. So Grace back in the shotgun, Harding, the man in motion once again. Grace pump fakes, and now will keep it himself. He swallowed up and can't get rid of the def of the Columbus Grove Bulldog. Yeah, and I talked to a few people before the game, Garrett, and uh, um, Crestview has had a, just a ton of injuries. I believe this is the third quarterback they've had this year playing so far. And, and they're missing, I think, two starting offensive linemen. They've got a, a wide receiver out. It's it's certainly been a challenging year on the injury front for the Crestview Knights. Second and 15 now for the Knights. It's Grace, fakes the handoff, looks to throw. Throws to the near sideline. Nearly a fantastic catch from Bo Eggleston. Tried to go up and over the Columbus Grove defender. Couldn't haul it in. And that'll bring up third and long. Yeah, well-thrown ball, but uh, really good coverage there by the secondary of Columbus Grove. Take a look at the Lodix Jewelry replay. Nearly got all hands on it. Did Bo Eggleston, but couldn't corral it in bounds. So yeah. third and 15 here for the Knights. Trenton Barraza in coverage. 6-1 sophomore. See what Crestview dials up here after the fake punt and about their own 30-yard line. Grace pressured. Escapes the pressure, is able to get rid of it, but it's thrown into the Crestview bench, and it'll bring up fourth and long. So Crestview will send Garrett Inger back deep once again to punt. Probably less likely to punt or go or uh, fake the punt, Scott, here on fourth and 15, I have to imagine. Yeah, they're punting from about the same spot they were before, though. Uh, maybe a little deeper, actually. So Yinger on to punt. Columbus Grove will drop back. Trenton Barraza to punt nearly blocked. And the punt will bounce at the 40-yard line. Roll to the 34. And Barraza is the number one punt returner in the Northwest Conference. Doesn't get a chance to do so to, on that one. So Columbus Grove takes over on their second drive. They lead 7-0 on the defensive touchdown. They went three and out the first time they had the football. So Brenton Renner and crew will have another opportunity here in this first quarter, the 648 mark. 
to show what they can do. The ball at their own 34-yard line. Columbus Grove 4-2 and two on a year. Crestview 3-3. Three and three. Knights have lost three in a row. Looking to break that streak here tonight at home. The final home game of the season. Crestview on the road in, in weeks 8, 9, and 10. There's Renner in the shotgun. He'll turn and hand off to Barraza. He's got a hole up the middle of the field with first down yardage and more. Trenton Barraza is off to the races, and he's got a 66-yard Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. That's his fifth on the year. Man, there was a hole there. Take a look at the Laudix Jewelry replay. You're right, Scott. There's a gigantic hole there on the right side. Barraza sees it, hits it, and is gone. Yeah, and Coach Schaefer talked about offensively their strength is their line play. They're tough, physical, and they showed it on that play. So the first play of the drive, Columbus Grove strikes. There's Shep Hawker on for the extra point for Columbus Grove after the 66-yard touchdown by Trenton Barraza. A snap back, kick is up, and the kick is good. Columbus Grove, 14, Crestview nothing on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard here on WOSN. First down, touchdowns tonight are presented by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. And we've got a pair of big touchdowns for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, a 38-yard fumble return for a touchdown by Kyle Lathrop and then a 66-yard touchdown run by Trent Barraza has the Bulldogs on top 14 to nothing on senior night here in Convoy and Crestview all you can do really here Scott is regroup and, and, and trot the offense back out there again and, and try to put some points on the board. Well two big plays by Columbus Grove and you know quickly so it, it's if you're Crestview right now you gotta you gotta try to change the momentum a little bit you gotta really focus and, and bring some energy right now or this thing could get out of hand. So the Bulldogs will boot it away. Shep Hawker doing the honors. Ball scooped up by Isaac Klein inside the 10 yard line and he'll reverse to the middle of the field. Gets past a couple of Bulldogs before he's brought down on the 22 yard line. And Cressy will set up shot for their third drive of the night. Klein does a nice job on the returns. He's, he, he looks to be fearless. And that's what you got to be when you're a kick returner. Uh, back in my day, which was a Wednesday, now, uh, our our coaches told the, the kick returners basically, I need I need people who are insane because there are a lot of guys running at you, and all they want to do is rip your head off. That's not a great position to be in. <laughs> that's right. And so you're running the opposite direction. It's a head-on <laughs> right. collision, typically. So, so the Knights will line up in the shotgun. Grace with Harding. And Klein to his, Harding to his left, Klein to his right. Excuse me, new running back in for Crestview. As Braxton Leith gets his first carry of the evening. Gain of about two there for Leith on his first carry. Interesting formation there by the Knights. It's, they go two backs in the backfield with Levi Grace for the first time. They'll line up in that once again. Well, and they've had a little success in the run. I, you know, I'd, li I'd like to see them run two or three plays in a row, see what happens here. Grace scans the defense. Letting the play clock run down inside five seconds. Turns, pitches to Leith. Leith with a couple of guys missed. Gets out just shy of a 30-yard line. Very close to a Union Bank first down. Yeah, it's going to be third and about two, two and a half, three, three yards here. Nice little run. I like the cut inside. You see the defensive end gets pushed out. He's got an opportunity to plant that foot, cut back inside, pick up about four yards there. Nice run. And really when Crest uses this deep into their, you know, quarterback depth chart, being in these third and real manageables is almost at times best case scenario, isn't it? Absolutely. Grace in the shotgun, Lee through his right, Klein to the left on third and two. Knights looking for a Union Bank first down. Grove's coming. And Braxton Leith is gobbled up in the backfield. Whole host of white shirts in the backfield for the tackle for a loss, and that'll bring up fourth and about six. Yeah, Columbus Grove had nine guys in the box. They brought the outside linebacker in on a blitz, and, and he had absolutely nowhere to go. Big stop there for Leighton Blankmeyer in on the stop originally 
for the Crestview Knights. So Garrett Yinger on to punt once again for Crestview with four and a half to go here in this first quarter. And again, Trenton Barraza, number one punt returner in the Northwest Conference. Let's see what happens. Yinger, Columbus Grove pressures once again. Ball takes a Columbus Grove bounce. Knights wisely pounce on it. But Columbus Grove going to have very good field position here for their third drive. So the Bulldog offense comes back out. Hasn't had a whole lot of work here through the first two drives, four plays. But they've got 14 points on the board, one of them. A defensive touchdown and a 66-yard touchdown run by Trenton Barraza. And they're going to have their best starting field position of the night. When I talked about, uh, you know, at the top, one of the keys to the game is uh, the challenge goes out to the Crestview defense, and they got to rise to the challenge now. Got to get a stop here as Brenton Renner in the shotgun, hands off to A.J. Schaefer, the power back, stiff arms two defenders before he's brought down past the midfield stripe. Yeah, Schaefer's a nice running back. He's got good size, good vision. He's strong. Six foot one, 225 pound senior. You're right on size. And you see that on display here where uh, that's just a Mack truck coming at you in the open field. One stiff arm, a second stiff arm before Parker Speed makes the tackle hanging on for dear life. Well, and Coach Schaefer said, he said, we got a good running game. We just don't have very many weapons on the outside. Past four seasons, that's been their strength. High snap, Renner catches it on the bounce and it's brought down right at the midfield stripe by Wesson Ludwig. Little but break for Crestview. Crisis averted there for Columbus Grove as uh, You'll see on this Lodix Jewelry replay, just a bit high and to the right. Renner catches it on the bounce. That's a lucky bounce for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, but Ludwig there on the stop for Crestview to swallow him up and push him back a couple yards. Brings up third and six. Good hands by Renner. Schaefer in the backfield. High snap once again. Schaefer gets the handoff. Stiff arms. Very close to a Union Bank first down. Going to be about a yard shy, though, to bring up fourth and one. Yeah, but that last lunge... I thought he might have uh, crossed the plane there, crossed the line to gain, but a little bit short, about six, eight inches short. Had to get to the 44. The ball's right at the 45. So Grove keeps the offense on the field. Schaefer to the left, offset behind Renner. Two wide receivers split out wide to each side. Schaefer gets the handoff. He's got the first down and more. Still out rumbling to the 30-yard line, churning those legs as a whole host of Knights bring him down. But it's a Union Bank first down for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Yeah, and probably a good choice there. I think if I'm coaching, I, I, I'd give the ball to him as well. That's a, uh, that's a solid running back that's only going to go forward even if he's hit. So he's going to pick up that yard for you and pick up quite a few more. You have to like your chances of getting a yard with 6'1", 225. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, force. Schaefer in the shotgun with Renner, looking to throw to the near sideline, looking for Barraza, and it's over his head and incomplete. Well, everything about that play looked great. Quarterback dropped, had a three-step drop, planted, threw a nice ball, good, good tight spiral, just a little bit high. So second and 10 upcoming here for Columbus Crow. 2.09 to play here in this first quarter on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Schaefer continues to be the back in the backfield as Barraza will line up as the slot to the left of Renner in the gun. Now they'll send Barraza in motion. High snap once again, handed to Schaefer, and he's swallowed up in the backfield. The football's loose. loose, and I believe Garrett Yinger pounces on the football. Ren Sheets, number 14, with the fumble recovery for the Crest Unites. Take a look at the Laudix Jewelry Instant Replay. Schaefer pushed backwards, and a football just comes out, and Ren Sheets is there to pounce on it. Well, Schaefer just, I think, was a little bit surprised. He got hit early here, and then he tries to fight to get free, get back to the line of scrimmage. And when he does, uh, I think that was a foot that hit the football, popped it out. So Crestview, very fortunate, said they needed to steal possessions. Got one there. First and 10 for the Knights. Two minutes to go in this first quarter. Grace in the shotgun. Bryson Penix in the shotgun now at quarterback. We were told he could play some quarterback. Hands off to Isaac Klein. Gain of a couple of yards there on first down for Grove, or for Crestview, excuse me. So Bryson Penix, a six foot, 200 pound sophomore, taking a shotgun snap there. And hands off to Isaac Klein off left tackle for a couple of yards. 
Well, Columbus Grove is uh, Coach Schaefer is very proud of his linebacking group. He believes that they they possibly could be all state level linebackers, and so running the football against them is going to be tough. Bryson Penix, the quarterback keeper that time, time gain of about a yard and a half or so. It'll bring up third and five for the Crest Unites, and Penix slow to get up. Penix is six foot, two hundred pound sophomore. And they blew the whistle. We'll see if they remove Penix or not. Looks like he is going to stay in the ball game after he was slow off the grass. So Penix on third and five. Hands off to Isaac Klein. Needs to get to the 47-yard line. Brought down just at the first down marker. Penalty flag thrown on the far sideline, though. We'll see what the call is. Yeah, it looked like it was right at the point of contact, which tells me it's probably either holding or a face mask. And it is a hold against Crest Unites. So that will make fourth and one instead, third and about 13. Yeah, that's tough. You know, when you're getting close to getting a first down, you're kind of moving the ball a little bit. They've had a couple of successful run plays, and then bang, you get hit with a penalty. Now it's third and deep, long. 13, 14 yards, that's a tough, tough on the offense. Well, and that's, uh, you're trying to string together a couple Union Bank first downs if you're Crest. You one, to run a little clock, but two, build a little momentum, and now you're faced with third and 15 as Penix will be in the shotgun once again. Back to pass, looking, pressured, swallowed up and thrown to the turf by Dylan Bryan of Columbus Grove. And Penix is a little bit slow getting up too. I think, it, you know, that was the case to me. It looked like a little indecision. He wasn't sure what he was going to do here. Wasn't sure if he's going to take off running. By the time he did, it was just a little bit too late. He's already in the grass of big old 61. Yeah, Dylan Bryan, the sack there for Columbus Grove, and that'll end the first quarter of play. Columbus Grove, two big touchdowns on the board. They lead Crestview 14-0 after one quarter. You're on WOSN. Replays tonight are provided by Lodox Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater and Van Wert or online at Lodox.com. Second quarter about to begin. Crestview looks like they're forced to punt on fourth and 24 as they'll conceivably send it away to the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Trenton Barraza back deep to return for the Bulldogs. As Yinger gets it away, it's a low-line driver. Barraza doesn't get a chance to return it well, down by speed. That's three he hadn't had a chance to return. This one into the wind. It's a little breezy out here tonight. Uh, as soon as that sun went down, it dropped about 10 degrees. Probably not a coincidence that Trent Barraza hasn't got a chance to return a punt yet, is it? Uh, I have to imagine that uh, 61 degrees at kickoff and Probably got a little chillier since then. It is week seven of the high school football season, so it is uh, the calendar will flip to fall tomorrow morning, so we'll, or flip to October, I should say. Yeah, we have been fortunate with the weather. So Barraza, the handoff, as he's in motion, gets out past the midfield stripe. Gain of about seven yards there on first down for the sophomore running back. Yeah, he's got speed, and uh, what I like about him, he runs with his head up, his eyes up, Always looking, and he's got enough speed and agility to make the cut when he needs to. A nice run here by Barraza. You see him reading the blocks, cutting inside, picks up about eight yards. I found that hole in that Lodox Jewelry replay. A great look at it from our WOSN crew as Barraza in motion once again. Renner in the shotgun with Schaefer to his right on second and two. Now, now turn to the sidelines, get further instructions from the Columbus Grove coaching staff. Five seconds on the play clock. Schaefer, the handoff, has the Union Bank first down, gets close to the 30-yard line. Yeah, and I, I like that play. They show a little jet sweep action there just to kind of freeze the linebackers, I think, and then you come with Schaefer up the gut on a dive play where he's got power and uh, really doesn't get met by any defenders till he's about two yards past the first down, the line to gain. Crestview head coach James Lawson, as we told us, we got to read the misdirection. We can't get focused on those things. and. Did a nice job there, but still a first down for Columbus Grove. Renner throws to Hawker in the open field at the 40-yard line, brought down at the 37. Wesson Ludwig on the stop, as was Wren Sheets. 
Well, and Coach said, he said they're really interested in developing weapons on the outside. And you can see Hawker here does a nice job receiving the football and then making a little play, finding a gap, picking up five yards. Second and five, Renner joining the shotgun with A.J. Schaefer to his left, three receivers. The top left of your screen as Schaefer gets the handoff. Ren Sheets meets, meets him in the hole, as does Wes and Ludwig. Those two combine for another tackle. Gain of about a half yard will bring up third and four. Well, Ren Sheets paid the price for that tackle. But you know, Garrett, I, I do like the Columbus Grove offense. On, when they do pass the football, they're short passes. They're very uh, yeah. they're compact, high degree of completion percentage, and uh, very low risk. Third and four, Barraza the carry. Schaefer clearing the way as he gets to the 30-yard line to the 25. He's brought down finally. So they roll up on Zane Steckschultz. He's glad to see that he's okay. But the carry by Barraza picks up another Union Bank first down as you take a look at it on this Lodix Jewelry instant replay. Yeah, really nice blend here between Barraza and Schaefer. You got power and you got speed in the backfield. And... Uh, Coach Schaefer is using them both well. And Andy Schaefer told us he liked the style that they played last week in their win over Lipsick and, and wanted to continue that. And it looks like they're doing that here in this first half as the clock continues to tick. Renner, the bubble screen to Hawker out in the open field. Brought down in the open field by Mason Spieth. That might have been a touchdown saving tackle for the Knights. Yeah, they ran this play to the right to the short side of the field about three plays ago, picked up five yards. They run it to the left this time to the wide side of the field. Same play, and they pick up about seven or eight. So nice play calling there. Clock continues to tick on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. 8.45 to go here in this first half. And the Bulldogs wanted to start quickly. I'd say they've done that here in the early stages of this first half. Renner with Barraza to his right. Will keep it himself off right tackle. Jukes gets inside the 20-yard line. Brought down just shy of the 15, but it's another Union Bank first down for Grove. So the chains will move and reset. Longest drive of the night here for Columbus Grove is the eighth play of the drive upcoming. Started on their own 45-yard line. Well, and I like the uh, pistol formation here that Grove uses. It gives them options to run, pass, Schaefer the carry after lining up offset, but a big stop there by Bo Eccleston of Crestview. Brings him down after a gain of about a foot. Well, again, they ran that same play too about three plays ago and, and got the same result there as well. Just a little inside handoff. Crestview's offensive lineman, or defensive lineman, got a little bit of a surge there. Bulldogs content to run a little clock here. It's 10 seconds remain on the play clock. Esperanza gets lined up with five. Timeout called by Columbus Grove after the communication, miscommunication, I should say. They lead 14-0 over the Crest Knights here with 721 remaining in the second quarter on WOSN. First down tonight brought to you by Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Columbus Grove picking up a couple of Union Bank first downs on this drive. Looking for another one here. Second and 12 at the 10 yard line so they can get another first down before being forced in a goal to go situation as Schaefer will line up as the deep back behind Renner. Barraza and Steck Schulte to the right of your screen. Schaefer, the carry. He's bottled up once again, another big play by the Crestview defense, they have swallowed up A.J. Schaefer as for a couple of losses there as Bo Eggleston gets another stop for loss. Well, puts him in third and about 11 now. Nice job by the Crestview defense, shedding blocks and getting back and making tackles. So third and 11 here for the Bulldogs, kind of a no man's lane at the 13 yard line. I like that, you saw about five blue jerseys around the ball carrier. Renner and Barraza in the gun, Schaefer, Offset. Look for Barraza wide right. No. Renner dropped the football, has to scoop it up. Ren Sheets there immediately for the stop, as was Donovan Reith for Crestview. That's a pair of back to back big plays by that night D. Yeah, and it puts Columbus Grove fourth and in, in, in about 12 or 13 here. Do you see just a little mishandle? And we saw a snap earlier that was wide. Yeah. Um, and, and now they have a little trouble with the snap again. So. 
So they'll bring Shep Hawker on for the field goal attempt. Well, and Coach really likes Shep Hawker. He said that he can actually kick the ball very, very well. He said Reese has been working with him in the past few seasons to make sure we could get at least by time to develop someone else in the kicking game, and they're doing that with, and with Hawker. <laughs> you can see it on display there, a 31-yard field goal by Shep Hawker makes it 17-0. Columbus Grove here in the second quarter on WOSN. Northwest Conference standings you see as we enter week seven of the high school football season. Columbus Grove in third place, while Crestview looking for their first conference win of this season as we get inching closer and closer and closer to the playoff race. Of course, Crestview 14th in Division 7, Region 26, while Columbus Grove is in sixth place in Division 6, Region 22. And got a big guy with the football as Wesson Ludwig making a couple of guys miss. Couple of different big guys with the football tonight, and he'll return it out to the 35-yard line. Well, I, you know, I like I like what I saw there from him. Very patient, kind of waited for some blocks to develop, took his time, and then when he saw a hole, he exploded through it, lowered his shoulder, and picked up yards after contact. I like that. Everything you want to see in a return guy. Generally, when the big guys get the football, there's a, oh, why do I have the ball and what do I do with it? It wasn't the case for Wesson Ludwig. He was looking to punish some people. Yes, he was. So the and did. Crest Unites trailing 17 nothing in the ball on their own 34-yard line. Their first drive here in this second quarter with 5.52 remaining on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Penix hands off to Klein, looking for room. Bottled up at the 35, so a gain of one by Klein. Defensive front four for Columbus Grove doing a really good job of occupying the linemen and then allowing the linebackers to pursue into the gaps and make tackles making it very difficult on Crestview to run the football. Having an injured night on the field as Tanner Short is down from his offensive lineman spot. 537 to go here in this second quarter. And really, Scott, this is the last thing you want to see if you're a Crestview Knight fan. You're down your starting quarterback, down a wide receiver, already down a couple of other offensive linemen. And the last thing you want to see is Tanner Short down now. Well, it seems to work that way. You know, when you got uh, when you when you got guys that are injured, you bring in other guys that aren't really quite as ready to mm -hmm. play, and, and oftentimes that's what happens. Take a look at the computer points there. Columbus Grove, even though they're at four and two, they are solidly in a spot to host a playoff game if the season ended today. Luckily for those of us who love as much high school football as we can get, the season doesn't end today. So. Columbus Grove in sixth place. And then, of course, the top 16 teams now make the state playoffs. And Crestview in 14th. And uh, this would be a big game to propel them solidly into the playoff chase if they can grab a victory here tonight. Well, and that's what I mentioned at the beginning. Both of these teams, this is a win that, that's going to help, you know, push them further into the playoffs uh, or, or up the state uh, computer points board. And uh, both teams could really use a win here tonight. When you take a look at those, you know, AP rankings where Antwerp is fourth in the region but ranked fifth in the state, or Arlington, who uh, had a big win over Liberty Benton earlier this season, ranked eighth in the state but sixth in their own region. It's funny uh, how that can all shake out. A short will get here to the sideline, look late on his own power. And unluckily for the Knights, looks like they're going to have to sub in another offensive line. Well, you know, Garrett, you mentioned it, though. That uh, I think that's reflective of the football in our area. We've got a lot yeah. of really good teams, and, you know, sometimes you fight to be fifth or sixth in your region and, and yet be state ranked. So Penix in the shotgun with Klein, the deep back. The clock continues to tick. Penix scans the defense under five seconds to go on the play clock. And now we'll hand off to Klein, runs right up the middle before he's met. Leighton Blankmeyer in the stop. That's going to leave third and about eight and a half, nine. Take a look at the Lodix Jewelry replay. Klein just uh, runs into his own blocker there at first, but then that gives the Bulldogs enough time. A.J. Schaefer grabbed him around the ankles to bring him down. And you're right, Scott, third and seven upcoming here for the Knights. Well, again, credit that. Columbus Grove defensive line. They're standing up the offensive lineman for Crestview. Penix looks to throw, fires, nobody home. And it looks like that's going to be another three and out for the Knights. 
So 4.33 to go here in this second quarter. Crestview with three timeouts, Columbus Grove with two. And the Bulldogs are conceivably going to get the football back, as we've mentioned a couple of times, Scott Trent Barraza, the leading punt returner in the Northwest Conference, still waiting for his first opportunity of the night. Well, he's been lining up about 10 yards too deep for the punt uh, to receive it on the fly, so maybe he's adjusted this time. Yinger back to punt, sends it away. It bounces at the 30-yard line and goes, I thought it bounced out of bounds, but Barraza wanted to crack at it. He swallowed up at the 25-yard line. Yeah, it was close. It bounced right close to the uh, out-of-bounds line, but kind of uh, bounced back towards him, so he picked it up, took off, and uh, pinned against your sideline like that. Not a whole lot of options. Yeah, if he could, it, it's tough to kind of get those on the bounce and get, get the return you want to get there if you're, if you're Trent Barraza. Yeah, and maybe that's just the plan that Columbus Grove has from a coaching standpoint is be a little bit deep and uh, keep everything in front of you. First and 10 for the Bulldogs after putting a field goal from Shep Walker on the board. Their last timeout. So at their own 25-yard line, Brenton Renner and crew will go to work. Barraza will join Renner in the shotgun. A.J. Schaefer lines up as the wing there in the middle of your screen. And they'll send Hawker in motion. Fake the handoff to Hawker. Renner looking to throw, has a man deep, has to stop for it. Ball's tipped oh, up and picked. caught by Jared Harding. Harding still up, brought down finally, but a fantastic concentration play by Jared Harding in coverage. You'll take a look at the Laudix Jewelry replay. They fake the handoff to Hawker. Renner lets it fly, was looking for Zane Steckschultz. He had to stop and come back for it. Ball just pops up into Harding's arms. Yeah, Stexilty was open. He had he had Harding beat by about two or three steps. The ball was a little underthrown, so he had to come back to it, and uh, that's when all the uh, all the uh, action took place right there, as you see. So Crestview, great, great starting field position, great concentration. The Forty-seven yard line. Penix, Leith, and he's gobbled up. Yeah, Leaf was just a little bit late. I, I don't think he thought he was getting the football there. Kyle Lathrop, another big play on, def on the defensive side of the football. You see on the replay, Leith <laughs> looks up to Penix, thinking, why are you <laughs> holding that football out that I'm supposed to grab right. it? Right, just a little indecision there, and you can't have that. So second and 12 now for the Knights. And, um, but, you know, they talked about stealing possessions and score when they've got the opportunity. This would be a big opportunity here for Crestview as the closing stages of this first half, trailing 17-0. Just across midfield. By the way, the Crestview field looks awesome. Yeah. You know, there aren't that many natural turfs anymore in this area. Looks great. Leith, the swing pass, runs into his own blocker, and it's going to get right back to the line of scrimmage, but no further. Now the Columbus Grove Bulldogs are saying the ball popped out. Leith fumbled, but I believe he had been down for a hot second here. We'll take a look at the replay, the Lonex Jewelry replay. Yeah, and just a little, again, a little indecision here. He's not sure what he was going to do. I'd like to see him keep running full speed towards the sidelines there and pick up what he can get. Tad Cook rips the football out and lands right in his lap, but I believe the officials had blown the play dead as the forward progress had been stopped by Leith. So Penix on third and long, looking, stands in the pocket, fires, Caught by Parker Spieth. It's a gain of about seven. Tad Cook's helmet comes off, so he'll have to come out for a play, but it'll be fourth and about eight for the Knights. Yeah, nice play there. I like to see that there. Nice, short, high percentage pass. Good run after the catch here, picking up a couple additional yards. So fourth and eight, and Crestview will keep the offense on the field at the 44-yard line. That's Penix and Braxton Leith in the gun. Two receivers to the right and one to the left. Penix rolling, still rolling, has to let it fly, and it's caught by Kellen Putnam for Union Bank first down. Nice play by Kellen Putnam to move the chains for the Crestview Knights. Yeah, really good patience here, waiting for the receiver to come open. And they pick up just enough for a first down. You know, they tell you not to throw back to the other side of the field when you're rolling that way. And Bryson Penix didn't care. Found a wide receiver at Union Bank first down. And now a timeout called 
by Columbus Grove. So 1.48 to go here in the second quarter. Bulldogs lead 17-0 as we're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. 17-0, Columbus Grove the lead. Crestview putting their best drive of the night together so far, Scott, and uh, done it uh, really when, it, when it's mattered most, a couple of uh, you know third and 15 situations, things like that. They, they have uh, answered the bell when they've been called. Yeah, for sure. It's livened up the crowd on this side. We've got a pretty yeah. good crowd out here, uh, on, especially on the Crestview side. They had some ceremonies you know, before the game with the seniors and that sort of thing, and so have quite a big crowd here on this side of the field, so um, they've got a little bit to be excited about. You get a beautiful shot there of Convoy here uh, by our WOSN crew. As Crestview trail 17 nothing with 1.48 to go here in this second quarter. As Bryson Penix has come in at the quarterback position. As, uh, I, I imagine if you told James Lotzenheiser, the Crestview head coach, that Bryson Penix was gonna play meaningful snaps for you at quarterback, he probably wouldn't love that idea, and yet here they are knocking on the door trying to put their first points on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Braxton Leith behind Penix. As he'll drop back to pass and sling it to Leith. Leith in the open field, reverses, and he is swallowed up by Landon Schrader. Well, I like the play. I like it a lot, and, and it felt like it gained yardage there, but it really just got back to the line of scrimmage. So second uh, and 10 upcoming here for the Knights. Yeah, a couple times now uh, we, we've seen Crestview ball carries. Nice run here. It's going to be close to the first down, but we've seen the Crestview receivers and the ball carriers, in, instead of going to the edge, they're bringing the ball back to the center of the field where there's a lot of Columbus Grove defensive players. Isaac Klein on the carry there for the Union Bank first down and breaks a string of four consecutive passes for the Knights as Leith and Klein will join Penix in the gun. Approaching one minute to go here in this first half. Penix oh, to ball's Klein. Loose. Ball's loose again, and it's gobbled up by Schrader. Landon Schrader pounces on the football. We've got one official saying it's Columbus Grove's football, the head official. Yeah, I think Columbus Grove definitely recovered that. Well, I I'm not sure how you could say it was anything other than that. The head official, I think, said the ball hadn't been spotted for play. I, I think Crest, it's still Crestview's football. Now, the Knights just took a timeout. But yeah. the, the chains are still set that it's Crestview's football. The official, the head official, never, never signaled that it's Columbus Grove's football. I think it's still Crestview's ball. And I'm not sure what the confusion was before the play or what might have negated that snap. Yeah, Garrett, I, I don't know how it could be anything but. Right, Columbus right. Grove's Clear, ball. That clearly, was clearly Columbus, a fumble. Columbus Grove's a clear there wasn't recovery. even a pile. It was just, there was yeah. one one kid with the football. So I'm I'm not certain what the call is there that retains possession. As we'll take a look back at the Lodix Jewelry replay, the official to the top right corner of your screen blew the play dead, and I think they're saying that the. I, I guess is the ball never officially set for play? Well, I don't know how. It's, it's, it's clearly set there. Nobody's blowing anything dead. They run a play, hand it off. The ball's loose. Landon Grove Schrader, recovers. Landon Schrader, it's a clear recovery. But then the official says, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm, I'm not certain. I have no idea. What would be the call there to for the Knights to retain possession? They'll line back up in the same formation that they were previously. Penix in a gun, second and 12. Turns, fires, balls high, and can't be corralled by Putnam. Yeah, Putnam does a good job there, I think, of just knocking the football down so it wouldn't be picked. But, you know, Crespi, very fortunate here, given an opportunity on uh, on a, on a, on on a situation there where they thought they had given up the football. Right. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Third and long here for the guys in blue. Looking for their first points of the night on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. 
Penix looking right, fires right, too high for Eggleston, nearly intercepted by Columbus Grove's Mitch Ellerbrock. Might have been caught off guard just a hair, was going for the tackle, I believe, and the ball got poked up in the air. You see it on the Lodix Jewelry replay. He poked it to himself and then had to go find it and couldn't corral it. You see the hands on the head of, ah, I could have had that one. Yeah, Eccleston did a nice job there. He was open, available as a receiver. The ball was just a little bit high. You know, one of the challenges, too, that, you know, you've got a lot of guys at Crestview playing positions they don't usually play. Mm -hmm. You know, you move one guy like Penix into quarterback, somebody has to come in and replace him. And then somebody replaces that guy because he moved from somewhere else. So it's very difficult. Fourth and 12, Penix in the gun, and he's gobbled up. Going to be brought down, whistle blown. But a big play made by Hunter Sudlow of Columbus Grove. As you see, Penix hangs in the, in the pocket for a long time before Sudlow gets there and just swallows him up. And finally, Columbus Grove, after maybe they feel like they should have gotten the football earlier, forces a turnover on downs. Yeah, and I think that's just a little bit of an inexperience, you know, at the quarterback position. Probably should have got rid of that football quickly, even an incomplete pass but held on to it and, um, you know, big sack. 34 seconds to go in the half. They'll hand off to A.J. Schaefer. He's rumbling free into the open field. He's got a Union Bank first down and more. We'll see if they call the Union Bank first down. They might mark him just shy of the marker. They do. So the clock continues to tick. 20 seconds to go in the half. Bulldogs do have one timeout. They'll keep it. Renner fires. Caught. Big hit made by Crestview. Yeah, that'll be a first down, but I believe he stays in bounds. So once they get the, everything set, the clock will tick. So big play made there by Hunter Jones. And Renner now turns, fires. It's caught by Veraza. He'll step out of bounds with two seconds remaining after a pair of completed passes by Columbus Grove. Well, they have two seconds here, a little bit out of field goal range, so most likely going to take a shot here. And now Columbus Grove will take their final timeout of the half. I, I have to assume that Brenton Renner can't get the football to the end zone from the 46 or 50-yard line or so, so uh, I imagine some hitching and some pitching or a halfback pass or uh, I believe Scott Van Pelt calls it uh, pitchy, pitchy, woo-woo is, yeah. is, the, <laughs> is the play call. <laughs> there but uh, two seconds left you got a 17 point lead you're going to get the football to start the half it doesn't or, or excuse me you're going to give Cressy the football to start the half it doesn't hurt to really kind of just take a shot here and see what happens yeah and I think uh, that's what you want to do and you want to make sure everybody's on the same page here you don't want to give up a score for sure right so uh, you know it's probably going to be something down the field quite a ways and we've seen you know they they Crestview or Columbus Grove, excuse me, had a one-play 66-yard drive earlier where if you can get the football into Trent Barras' hands, who knows what he can do with it. And he's lined up right there in the slot to the right of the formation. It's Renner in the shotgun. Final play of the first half. He'll turn and fire. Hitch, pitch to Barraza, racing up the far sideline. And they're going to get him just inside the 10-yard line. A heck of an effort there. But the hitch and pitch to Barraza gets him to the 10, a gain of 36. But Crestview there to swallow him up before he can get to the pylon as we'll take a look at the Lodix Jewelry replay. Yeah, Pass caught by Hawker, and then Barraza had some room to rumble. Very well executed play here. And you can see Barraza is about uh, 10 yards short of the end zone. But a nice, nice, ex effort. nice execution there by the Columbus Grove Bulldogs to end the first half of play. They lead Crestview 17 to nothing here at the break. We'll come back with third quarter action for you right here on WOSN. Second half about to get underway here at Crestview. It's the Knights trail Columbus Grove 17 to nothing. And Scott, we got to take a look at some first half stats there, courtesy of Ned Steck, Schulte from Columbus Grove. Does a great job of not only keeping Crestview or Columbus Grove stats, but stats for the entire Northwest Conference. And uh, Columbus Grove outgains Crestview there in that first half, 179 yards to 25. And I know there's a lot of uh, revisionist history maybe of, well, if you take away the 66-yard touchdown and the 38-yard fumble return for a touchdown, this is a 3 nothing game. Y you can't do that because those things happened. It, it is 17 to nothing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But, but truth be told, uh, it, it is a fairly evenly matched game. 
other than those two big plays. Right. So, so I hear what you're saying, and, and, and it makes sense, and, and you're right, that's part of the game. Um, but if Crestview could pull back those two plays, they're right there. Well, it's, it, it, it's very evenly matched. Grove has 179 yards of offense, 66 come on Barraza's touchdown run, I think 46 come on the hitch and pitch to end the half. Uh, th that is a big chunk of, of Grove's offense. And, and you're right, if you take away those things, it is an evenly matched game. But, again, you can't because they happened. It is 17-0. And Cressy is going to get the ball to start the second half here and have an opportunity to cut into that lead. Well, and the key is, too, Columbus Grove is averaging 6.1 yards per run, per rush. So when they hand it off to their big dudes in the backfield, Schaefer and Barraza and a little bit of Renner there mixed in, they're they're being very productive with it, and and we've in that six point one is mixed in with a couple you know Cressy had has has stopped AJ Schaefer in the backfield a couple of times now he's gotten his carries he he's gotten some yards but uh, it, it seems like it's either been feast or famine both for Columbus Grove in the ground game but but also for Cressy defensively if they you know if they get a stop it's a, a yard or two behind the line and if they don't it's five or six yards down down the line. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you know so. So this second half, I think uh, Crestview's going to get the football here, so they got an opportunity to, to respond, maybe come out of halftime, something real positive here, and, and make this thing a, a, a game. Isaac Klein is back deep to return for the Crestview Knights, as is Kellen Putnam. Shep Hawker will send it away, and they'll kick it to Klein. He'll scoop it up at his own 10-yard line. And he's grabbed by Barraza at the 20. Slung to the turf, and that's where Crestview will begin their first drive of the second half. You know, again, an interesting trend there. That's, uh, I believe, the fourth kickoff return um, Klein has had and fielded, and all four of them have been in that corner, and he's chosen to bring it back to the middle of the field with really uh, not a lot of success there. Yeah, and I I, I'd like to see him maybe take one up the sideline, see what he can do there. And, and that's I, I don't know if Crestview sets up a, hey, we're returning it away from our sideline every kick return or something like that. And Grove saw that and said, all right, kick it away from that sideline and make him run, you know, diagonally across the field rather than straight up the field. Right. Penix turns and pitches to Harding behind him, the man in motion, and he is gobbled up. A big stop there from Kyle Lathrop and Leighton Blankenmeyer on the stop for Columbus Grove. When again, what you're seeing here, and, and, and you can really see it from up here, and you see him pause there, just indecision. Indecision by n not uh, just one, but uh, several of the Crestview offensive players when they when they have the ball. Um, and, and I don't know that if that's because of all the changing positions and the coverage of injuries, not sure where to go, or or just not sure of being in that position. But that little hesitation allows Grove to close quickly. Second and 11, Penix throws. It's caught by Harding along the far sideline, a gain of about five there for Jarrett Harding, the 6'1 senior, He'll take, or junior, excuse me. He'll take a look at the Lodix Jewelry replay. Penix hangs in there and fires a football, an accurate football, caught by Harding to bring up third and five. Yeah, he does a good job of delivering the football as he's being hit. Third and six, maybe for Crestview. A pivotal series here for the Knights, trailing 17-0. I'm sure they'd like to string together a couple of Union Bank first downs. Harding with Klein behind him. Will roll to the near side, stops, reverses, and just has to dump it off. And it is an incomplete pass as he threw it to the feet of Isaac Klein. But that's a three and out for Crestview. Yeah, good decision there. He was going to uh, be sacked anyway, so Go ahead and throw it at the feet of your running back. Save six, seven yards there. So the Knights don't get the drive. They wanted to start the second half. Now forced to punt. As Yinger will be back deep to punt for the Knights. And Barraza standing at his own 47-yard line looks to receive the punt. He's closed the gap a little, though. Yinger. Slightly rugby style, bounces at the 49-yard line, takes a Crestview bounce, a nice Crestview bounce, and will be dead at the 36-yard line. So rolls about 13 yards there. So Crestview the beneficiary of that roll. So 10-14 to go on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard here in this third quarter. Columbus Grove gets their first crack at it. Well, again, if I, 
if I'm Columbus Grove, I think uh, given the first half stats, six yards a carry, rushing the football on the ground, um, I, I'm, I'm probably going to run the football at this point, work the clock, move the football downfield, and avoid turnovers. Barraza behind Renner. Schaefer, the wing. The sophomore Barraza gets the carry. Slips through one tackle to the 41-yard line before a whole host of guys in blue bring him down. Barraza is not huge, but he's no. surprisingly strong. He, he uh, typically takes more than one guy to bring him down. I like the way he runs with the football. Always eyes up, good vision. Six foot one, 175 pound sophomore. You see the legs continuing to churn on that Lottox jewelry replay. Renner with Schaefer in motion. And Barraza, the carry once again, off right tackle. Yeah, and I like that play. They brought Schaefer in motion over that side, and then Barraza just follows him through the hole. That's a nice guy to have up there blocking for you for sure. That it is. Third and one now for. Grove after a pair of Barraza carries. Well, and they run that same play. They off tackle the left, and then they ran it uh, the power off tackle the right. Let's see what they do here. Schaefer offset to the right of Renner. In the gun on third and one. High snap, Schaefer gets the carry. Got the Union Bank first down. I think it's going to be close, Garrett. I, it depends on where they mark him. That official on the far side is right at the stick. The official here on the near side is much more confident. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was going to get there easily, but a really good stop, really good effort there. Wesson Ludwig makes the stop for Crestview, but it does move the chains for a Union Bank first down. So three consecutive runs to start this drive for Grove. As Schaefer in motion once again. Renner fires to Hawker, caught in the open field. And he got to the 45-yard line of Crestview before he's shoved out of bounds. Well, we've seen that play three times now tonight, the first two times in the first half. First time it was five yards, second time seven yards, this time about eight or nine yards. So it's progressively uh, being more successful. And th those are high percentage passes there when it's just an easy pitch and catch to the, the guy running the bubble in the slot. Yeah, it's almost a modified run play. Renner sends Hawker in motion. Barraza to carry up the middle. He's in the open gone. field once again, and he's off to the races. Trent Barraza's got another 45-yard Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Well, he had 87 yards at the half, and he's well over the 100-yard mark now with about a, uh, what is that, a 40-plus yard run. yards. So he's up to about 140, 100, I can't do the math that quick, <laughs> 132 yards. He saw the Lottox Jewelry replay there as he broke one tackle and was off to the races from there. But a 45-yard Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown by Trent Barraza as Columbus Grove up 23-0, awaiting the Shep Hawker extra point. Snap back, kick down, kick up, hold down, I should say. Kick is up. No signal from the officials. There it is. It's up and good. It's 24-0 Grove over the Crest Unites with six with. 7.49 to go here in the third quarter on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Crest Unites is Carry Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in youth programs and communities. 24-0 Columbus Grove with the lead over the Crest Unites here on WOSN. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Scott Nurse. Trent Barraza with a pair of long touchdown runs, one from 66 yards out, one from 45 yards out. The difference virtually in the game so far for Columbus Grove. Yeah, the third big play there by Columbus Grove. Hawker sends it away, and they'll kick it to the other sideline now as Kellen Putnam catches, and they'll run it to the near sideline. Putnam with a couple of blockers, shoved out of bounds, just shy of the 40-yard line. But a nice return there by Kellen Putnam for Crestview. Kellen Putman, Putnam. Hey. Excellent return by Putnam. Good speed. You know, I thought, uh, and he brought it from the other side of the field all the way across the field. Nice return for Kellen Putman. And puts Crestview in really good starting field position. Ball at their own 39-yard line. And Bryson Penix will be in the shotgun. Klein 
as Hunter Jones and Jarrett Harding split out wide to the right. Klein to carry. Cut down by Schaefer, just shy of the 45-yard line, but a gain of about five for Isaac Klein on first and ten. Yeah, Crestview does a pretty nice job running the football, actually. They've been doing pretty pretty well uh, in, in, in positive yardage. It's when they tried to throw, it seems like uh, that's when they've gotten in a little bit of trouble there with sacks and, and uh, interceptions and the, those sort of things. Yeah, it was, felt like a couple of times, you know, Crestview had uh, shot themselves in the foot a couple of times with penalties and things like that that pushed them backwards, and they, you know, it, they're forced to throw on third and 12. He gets sacked, things like that. It just that snowball kept rolling downhill for them as Panix keeps it himself for a gain of one there on second down. But uh, take a look at the replay here. Get a great look at it from the end zone cam as he was patient and cuts it back up to get a, a yard or two but to make it third and four. But it just felt like they could never get those wheels moving forward there in that first half. Panix to Klein. Schaefer comes right off the edge and cuts him down for a loss. But see, again, that's that front four of Columbus Grove doing a great job of engaging the offensive linemen and then allowing the linebackers to shoot the gaps and make those plays. Uh, you see Schaefer coming from that outside linebacker position. He was coming right from the get-go and just came straight off the edge. Chris, you're going to keep the offense on the field on fourth and six with the ball at the 43-yard line. Wow. So Penix, two wide receivers split out wide to each side. Klein behind him. Fourth and six. From their own 43. Stands in the pocket and finally escapes, lets it fly as a man, but it's intercepted by Barraza, harding the intended receiver. Barraza, the INT, and that's, well, that's about as good as a punt. Well, but uh, if, if you're Barraza, you should have knocked this football down. That was fourth down. You would have had the football up past midfield at the 42-yard line. Instead, he makes that interception there. Actually, Grove lost about 35 yards on that play. And that's just one of those, you know, a sophomore trying to make a play. Well, and he made a play. So you, you got to say, hey, good job, great job. You made a play. But, but uh, you know, and that's part of uh, experience and having that football IQ from, from time on the field. Right, and that's just something you, something you learn. Mm-hmm as Hawker and Renner converse in the backfield. So he'll line up in the slot on the right of your screen. First and 10 with 5.43 to go for the Bulldogs. Barraza fakes the handoff. Renner, excuse me, the ball tipped by Bo Eggleston on the pressure. A nice job there by Eggleston to affect that pass, a 6'3 junior. Yeah, Bo got a hand on that football. And, get, and gave it the, uh, you know, all safe, that arms extended. Made sure. That's incomplete. Yes. But he was he was pressuring Renner pretty much right from the get-go after the play-action fake and got his mitts on the football to poke it right up in the air. So second and 10 for Grove. 5.35 to go on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Bulldogs with a 24-0 advantage. Barraza to carry off right tackle. Gets out to the... 35-yard line, so a gain of about eight there for Barraza on second down. Boy, he's so dangerous, too. He's, he's quick. Uh, and once he gets through that initial line, he, I, I feel like he has a chance to break it. He's broke two big plays. Fortunate that that one didn't, didn't go for more as well. Third and two. Schaefer the wing, Barraza the back. As Renner claps his hands, wants the football. Now we'll turn to Andy Schaefer and get further instructions. Third and three. Barraza to carry once again. Stood up right at the first down marker. I believe it's going to be fourth and short here. Take a look at the Lodix Jewelry replay. Yeah, he shoved straight backwards right at the first down marker. Yeah. So it's fourth and one for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I was sort of surprised they didn't have uh, A.J. Schaefer in there running the football in that short yard situation. Fourth and short. They'll talk about it here for just a moment. Play clock has that 20 and moving. Has, this is an interesting decision. 
You don't want to give Crestview the football in the best field position of the night. It looks like they'll send out the punt unit. And now they'll call timeout. So Grove takes a timeout to discuss this further with four minutes exactly remaining in the third quarter. They lead 24-0 on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is built by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit them at hawkerdrywall.com to see how they can help you. Columbus Grove going to send the offense back out on the field on fourth and one at their own 37-yard line. A.J. Schaefer lined up at running back. Offset to the left of Renner. Schaefer just barrels through a defender to get, up, get the first down. Yeah, he got it. I, I, I think if I was a coach and I had Schaefer in the backfield, I, I'd, I'd go for it in fourth and short uh, as well. I was going to say fourth and one would be uh, would look awful tempting when you got that that guy in the backfield. Well, I, and I like the way he runs, a power runner. But at the end of his runs, I've noticed several times he gets a little lunge. Yeah, he's leaning and forward. And so yeah, he picks up an extra yard, half a yard. A lot of times that can be the difference in a first down or not. And he's not looking, you know, to bust a 60-yard gain or anything like that. He knows what he needs to get and goes and gets it. Right. Schaefer, the pitch to the 45-yard line after avoiding a tackler at the 40. So a gain of six there on first and 10 for A.J. Schaefer. Yeah, Schaefer does a nice job there of uh, cutting this back against the grain. I, I believe that was a pitch to go to the wide side of the field, run to the edge, run over here to, to our side boundary. And uh, he just did a nice job of cutting it back inside, picked up six yards. So the football right in the center of the field to 43 with three minutes to go on the Hawker drywall scoreboard here in this third quarter. 24-0. Bulldogs with the lead in the football. Schaefer, wing, as Renner will throw it back. It's caught by Lane and Schrader with a convoy of blockers. Schrader off to the races, cuts back towards the middle of the field at the 25, He's 20, gone. He's at gone. the 10, 5, and a 57-yard touchdown from Renton Renner to Landon Schrader. Big play there for Landon Schrader for a Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Yeah, I like what Schrader did here, though. He kind of waited on a few blockers, and then he just navigates his way through. I don't think he's really running full speed most of the way yeah. here. He's kind of, you know, trying to get his eyes up and follow his blockers and then cut off of them. Does a great job, gets to the end zone. That brings it to 30 to nothing. So Shep Hawker on to kick the extra point. Perfect on the night. And he got that one as well to make it 31 nothing, Columbus Grove on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Grove leads in the third on WOSN. Instant replays tonight are provided by Laudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater and Van Wert or online at Laudix.com. 31 nothing the score for Columbus Grove and any time after halftime if that score is 30 or more, the clock becomes continuous except for what you see there on the screen, the scoring plays, the end of the score, the end of the quarter, you change possessions, and you get an official's timeout or somebody calls timeout. So now the clock is running officially here in this third quarter with a 31-0 advantage for Columbus Grove. And the Knights try to shut that running clock off as Shep Hawker will kick it away. And it's caught by Klein inside his own 10-yard line. Makes one man miss. They'll race up the near sideline, weaving his way through that Grove defense and brings it out to the 50-yard line before he's brought down. Well, you know, he's dangerous. I, I thought tonight he had a couple good returns, and and uh, that I think that's his fifth kickoff return, maybe sixth tonight that he's fielded, and he's had two or three that have been excellent returns and, and, and then a couple where he's picked up 10, 12, 15 yards. So I like him back there. He, he does a really nice job and, and, and appears to be somewhat fearless as well. Zane Steckschulte, the tackle for Columbus Grove, but not before Klein got out to the 50-yard line. Oh, we got a we got a penalty. Got a chop block. Well, that's only a, our uh, second penalty of the night. There's a Crestview Knight down at the just shy of the 25-yard line. Can't quite see the number on who is down for Crestview. But he's right at the penalty marker. We'll step aside, 31-0 to score. Columbus Grove leads Crestview in the third on WOSN. Back here at Crestview in the third quarter, Wesson Ludwig was the injured knight. He's the center 
So a new center in the ball game for Crestview. Number 58, David Sarin. And you can see a penalty Sorry. was tacked on to the end of that kickoff return. So Crestview gets first down at their own 35-yard uh, line. So Isaac Klein, the carry there on first down, a gain of just one. But you're right, Scott, after the, after the penalty, he, he got excellent field position. Great starting field position for the Knights. You see the Laudix Jewelry replay there. It's yeah, he, not much of a chance for that play to develop, really, when you get your linebackers in the backfield. So a running clock in effect with one minute to go here in this third quarter. Penix with Klein offset. Penix will keep it himself on the keeper. Bounces to the 25-yard line. Or excuse me, the 30-yard line. So third and five upcoming here for the boys in blue. And if you're Crestview right now, you know, you got to know that barring a miracle, um, you know, you're not going to win this game, but you would like to put some points on the board here. You'd like to have a successful drive, feel good about what you did. And um, third and six here is a pretty good position. Probably four down territory. Penix, two receivers split out wide to each side. Will turn and fire. Thrown, caught by Eggleston at the 25. He's gobbled up by Schrader, but it's enough, looks like, for a uh, Union Bank first down. Yeah, and he's down. He's hurt. Take a look at the Lonex Jewelry replay. Eggleston goes up, catches the football, and he's brought down and slammed to the turf hard and takes just a moment. And a nice sportsmanship there by Trent Barraza was trying to help him up, but then said, said, hey, well, well, he's hurt. So that'll do it for the third quarter of play, fourth quarter action. Coming up, Grove leads Crestview 31-0 on WOSN. Fourth quarter about to get underway. You take a look at the Associated Press football poll and the area teams represented. Wampak, after the opening week loss to Marion Local, has rattled off a couple of wins in a row, but then uh, the area well represented in Division 6, VI, Division 7. That we are looking forward to watching some of these teams make some deep runs in the high school football tournament. Yeah, and I had uh, the privilege of, of doing the Marion Local versus Sales game last week, too top-ranked teams in the state and uh, just excellent football down there. Yeah, how many teams in the state would, would love to have the quarterback problem that Versailles has? That well, <laughs> they got a couple of guys that can, that can sling it down there. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, and they, they're they situation-specific, so they they rotate quarterbacks in depending on what they want to do and do a nice job of it. Isaac Klein right up the gut, approaches a Union Bank first down. Going to be a yard shy of the marker, but it's a nice run up the middle for the junior running back. Second and one with the ball to 15-yard line. This is as deep as Crestview's pushed the football all night against Columbus Grove. Yeah, and if they can get a score here, it brings the score down under 30, and the, the clock uh, begins to operate as normal, as usual. Harding. Putman. To the right of your screen. you got three receivers. Klein gets the handoff. He goes right up the middle once again. That's enough for a Union Bank first down. And that'll make it first and goal for the Knights. When I think of your Crestview here, you keep running the football. They're having success running the football. Yeah. And, and really, that's been their most successful option all night long. And, um, you know, they're down as deep as they've been. So keep running the football, put it in the end zone. Sixth play of the drive upcoming here for the Knights. I lied. It is first and goal from the 13. So he didn't quite get inside the 10 yard line. So first and goal from the th or first and 10 from the 13, I should say, is Klein offset behind Penix. He'll play action fake, chased from the pocket. Now looking, fires into the middle of the end zone, and it's nearly intercepted by Barraza. Hung in the air for a hot second, and I believe Barraza lost his footing before he could go intercept that football. That was a little backyard football there. He's waving guys around and directing <laughs> them with his hand as he's running from, uh, you know, a defensive player chasing him. They, they are fortunate that wasn't picked. So second and 10 for the Knights. The 13-yard line, and you're right, Scott, they're lucky. They've still got control of the football. I think you run the football. 
Penix looking to throw, slings it to Klein. Klein being chased from behind is hit in the open field inside the 10 yard line by A.J. Schaefer. Nice play, I like that. That, that you know, for all practical purposes, that's a modified run there. Right. It was a very, very short pass, very safe, high percentage. And you can see Klein does a nice job. He knows what to do with it. He's, he, Klein is fearless. You he doesn't mind taking on a defender. You just throw it over the top of that uh, defensive lineman and you're out into the open field. So third and six here for the Crestview Knights. Big play for Crestview. Obviously four down territory. Ball at the nine yard line. Two receivers wide to each side. Penix now will hand off to Klein on the draw at the five. He's going to be just short. They had to get to about the three yard line for a first down. He's about right about the five yard line. Take a look at the Laudix Jewelry replay and Klein broke one tackle, got to the six about before Tad Cook sets him to the turf. So it'll be fourth and two here for Crestview trying to punch one in for their first Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Yeah, and Tad Cook closed on that quickly. I thought Klein was going to get the first down easily. Same formation. Fourth and two. Penix scampers, reverses field, takes a big shot from Schaefer, still on his feet. But he's brought down. And I don't know if they give him forward progress there or if he got the Union Bank first down. But yeah, I'm, I'm, forward progress would have given them the first down, but I believe because he continued to have, he broke free, had some effort, and went backwards on his own. You take a look at this replay, Scott. A.J. Schaefer comes in like a missile and yeah. just delivers a blow and sends him right back to where he came from. But they'll say it's first and goal for the Knights. Are, there, are we going to measure? The down marker. They'll say it's a first down. Huh? <laughs> They'll say that Bryson Penix picked up the first down and now a timeout called by the Crest Unites. <laughs> we saw on that Lottox Jewelry replay, Scott, that A.J. Schaefer turned Bryson Penix around like a merry-go-round and had to kind of reassess where he was in life. Uh, but they'll give him the forward progress and say he needed to get to the three. They've spotted him at the two, so they say he's a full yard past the first down marker. Yeah, and I thought when uh, Schaefer knocked him backwards and then he kind of regathered himself and went to make a move, they would uh, they would consider that uh, new move forward progress would have changed. More live football coming up on WOSN on Saturday. The uh, Hanover Panthers of Defiance College Yellow Jackets will face off in Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference action. McComb and Arlington, a dandy of a Blanchard Valley Conference matchup, and then Shawnee and Van Wert rounds out the Saturday football on WOSN. Then Sunday, Liberty Center and Bryan, and then the Crestview Invitational right here at Crestview High School. Uh, great volleyball being played tomorrow afternoon, and then Swanton and Bryan girls soccer round out Sunday's action here on so 7.30 to go here in this fourth quarter. That's a full weekend. That is it. You know? I don't know when some of these folks sleep. Got a lot of, a lot of sports on WOSN. 7.30 to go here in the fourth. First and goal from three. Double tight formation. Klein behind Penix. Harding lined up as the wing. Klein, the carry. Klein. The touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run for Isaac Klein has Crestview on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Well, again, it's just a great thing for the Crestview offense to, to feel good about, uh, about this game. You know, they struggled the whole game, and, and they finally get in and have a score here. So that's a little bit of positive vibes, a little bit of positive energy they can carry in the next game as well. So that's a Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Your first call for all your insurance needs. As we get Tad Cook across the line there for Columbus Grove, trying to time that up just perfectly. It is his first chance at it tonight. So uh, just slip through that center and guard. Now, Cress, you might consider Going for the two-point conversion here? I believe they are going to go for the two-point conversion. 
after yeah. moving the football up a little bit. Well, the first half, uh, they averaged 4.7 yards a rush. Uh, so they were they were fairly productive running the football, and uh, and now that it's at the one-yard line, why not? So they've got Wesson Ludwig as the center. He's the last man on the line of scrimmage here in this funky formation for the Knights. And did they false start? That they did. Got an illegal procedure against Crestview. Yeah, and I thought they were going to call that on Columbus Grove's defense. I thought maybe they uh, – Got into the neutral zone there, made contact. It looked like number 76 for Columbus Grove jumped a little bit early, but apparently he was drawn off. So now the field goal unit will come back out to try a longer extra point. So we await the snap from the Knights. Looks like Columbus Grove going to sit in the house. We okay. got another false start on Crestview. You saw an offensive lineman twitch. Oh, no. are they going to? They call that one off sides. So now we'll <laughs> take it right back to where it was beforehand. So now do you consider <laughs> sending, the, sending the two point? Uh, keep the, the field goal unit on the field. You know, the, the good part is, is now the clock is stopped. You know, <laughs> yeah. ha had they not have scored there, this clock would have been running during this whole time. So Columbus Grove going to try to block it. I think they did. Got a tip on it, and it's no good. 31-6 to six the score remains. Nonetheless, a three-yard touchdown run by Isaac Klein. A Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown as the scoreboard 31-6 on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Crest Unites is Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, providing pr proudly investing in youth programs and communities. Crestview turns the running clock off with a three-yard touchdown run by Isaac Klein. And now Columbus Grove trying to turn it back on. As Grove Bulldogs will return. Unless Crestview is going to try the onside kick here. And they will. Just the old rugby scrum. It is corralled by a Columbus Grove Bulldog. He shoves straight backwards. Can't advance the football. But Shep Hawker, or no, excuse me, number 22, Trevin Baxter, the return. Caught the kickoff there and was just rushed by uh, 11 guys wearing blue. But he did catch the football, and it'll be right at the 50-yard line. That was actually a pretty a pretty good onside kick there. Got exactly as far as it needed to go. Yeah, it went just, uh, just 10 yards and, and took a little fortuitous bounce up in the air. And everything you want from it. It's you know, these teams have been playing for a long time. Columbus Grove's been in the NWC since 1947, which is when the league started. Crestview entered in 1970. They left in 81, but then re-entered in 2000. So Renner, or excuse me, we got a whole host of new Bulldogs on the field as Landon Best in at quarterback. And he gave the football to Braylon Barrientes with the carry. You take a look at the Lodox Jewelry replay. Barrientes goes straight up the middle of the field before he's gobbled up by the Crestview D. Straight up the field and low. Just what, yep, you, yep. Run, what, what you want from a running back. And at this stage in the game, hey, we want to hold on to the football. We want to get the yards we can, keep the clock running, stay in bounds, all of those things. As best. Joined in the backfield. On second and nine, he'll turn and pitch to Grant Eversole. Eversole dropped for a loss of about one yard. We talked about how long these teams have been in the league. All-time Northwest Conference football team results. Columbus Grove has 15 championships, nine of those outright. Co-champs six times. You get a good look at the replay here. Good job by the uh, Oh, he lost the football there yeah, for he a did. second. I didn't see him lose the football, but, yeah, it popped up there. Yeah, it did. And that, uh, luckily, it came right back to him. So third and ten for the Bulldogs with 5.45 to play on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Best rolling, pressured, tries to escape the Crestview defense and 
scampers out of bounds. It's a loss of just a couple. And unfortunately, I think for Columbus Grove, he's probably going to learn, hey, remember when we told you we wanted you to stay in bounds? It's one of those times. Yeah, stay in bounds. Uh, of course, you know, the other option is throw the football away. Either way, it stops the clock. Yeah, <laughs> when, you're, when your options are throw the football away or step out of bounds or get creamed, <laughs> you know, yeah. stepping out of bounds doesn't sound so bad. Well, for Crestview all time, they've had three Northwest Conference championships. Three times they've been co-champs. So these teams have uh, had success in the Northwest Conference. A timeout called by Columbus Grove here after some miscommunication. And, and you, you'll get that on special teams where you've changed from your first, you know, your, your varsity punt team to your JV punt team. But we'll step aside as well. 31-6, Bulldogs with the lead on WOSN. 5.36 to play in the fourth quarter. Columbus Grove faced with a fourth and 12. They've got the punt unit on. As Brenton Renner will send it away. It's a high kick. Caught at oh. the 25-yard line. Continues to roll at the 20. And that is where Crestview will pick up the football. You know, Garrett, a lot of times coaches will leave the first team punt units, special teams. Yeah in when they're in a situation like this and have the second team come in and, and run the offense or defense. But typically they leave those starting groups in for special teams just so they don't have situations like they just had where they had to call a timeout or or you, or you have substitution arrows. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you, right, you right. Just, okay. and, and generally you don't think about, I need to tell our first team punt unit to remain ready right. until it's fourth and 12 and the Play clock is running down, and you go, oh, wait a second. Yeah, they're back on the bench with the right, helmets right, off, filling up with right, water. And, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, I need you to put your helmet back on. I thought you told us we were done. Well, I didn't think we were going to punt. So Crestview's varsity offense remains on the field. Or excuse me, I guess Levi Grace is the starting quarterback today for Crestview, but was replaced by Bryson Penix as Braxton Leith gets the carry for the Knights. So yeah, nice, nice run couple. there. He yeah. breaks one more tackle, and he's gone. I like the cutback here. Started on the left side, and then cuts it back to the right, but almost breaks free. So the clock continues to tick after the nine-yard carry by Leith. Five minutes remain in this Northwest Conference matchup. It's gotten cold out here tonight. It has. It? It's only September, Scott. I know. I know. It's only September. <laughs> so Grace will be in the gun. They'll send Isaac Klein in motion. I've gotten soft as I've gotten older. <laughs> Leith the carry. Got a convoy of blockers. Leith up the near side gone. Line. He's gone. He's off to the races. Got one man to beat. Can he beat him? No. Oh. Got to the one. Needed to go 72. Got 71. That's a big carry by Braxton Leith to put them first and goal for the Knights. Yeah, and I like the effort by Braylon Barrientes, He's number 10 for Columbus Grove to, to – uh, to chase him down and get the tackle just short of the goal line. But on the other hand, I feel bad for Leaf because he had a great run. I would like to see him get the touchdown here. So that's a, about as long of a Union Bank first down as you can get. But it's first and goal for the Knights from the one-yard line. You got to give it to Leaf to let him carry it yeah. in, don't you? He got us all you, the way here. Don't, don't you have – well, he's not even in the backfield. No, he's, yep, he is, he's the tailback right there. Oh, there he is. Behind, okay. yep, as they'll send Klein in motion. Yeah, Leaf, give it to him. the carry. Gobbled up, didn't get to the goal line. So he shoved backwards. He slams the football to the turf. No, and one, he's probably a little tired. He just ran 71 yards. Yeah. And they'll bring him out of the ball game. But a nice carry there by Braxton Leith to get them first and goal to one. And now they're back at the two-yard line. Yeah, good job by Coach there. He gave him this opportunity to complete yeah. the play. And... Uh, now we'll give him a rest. Second and goal, Harding and Klein joining Grace in the gun. Klein the carry, off tackle. He didn't get there either. He's down just shy of goal line. So the clock will continue to tank. 3.20 to play on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Yeah, Crestview would like to put, hang, hang another score on her on the scoreboard. Yeah, just to, to feel pretty good about how, what, what you accomplished here tonight in this second half. You know, you, um, it, it's I, I think it's real easy to, okay, we're down 31 nothing. All right, let's pack up the tent, get out of here. They've, they've fought hard here in this fourth quarter. Absolutely. Harding to the left, Klein to the right. 
Grace in the shotgun. Grove's coming. Klein to carry once again. Patiently waiting. I don't think he got there that time either. I believe Connor Douglas, number 76, stopped him shy. Yeah, that was definitely Connor Douglas. I, I thought uh, it might have been a horse collar there. He kind of grabbed him by the shoulder pads, pulled him back. So, fourth we, and goal for we've Crestview. Had, we've had a lot of action down at this <laughs> goal line that, during this fourth, fourth quarter. We've had uh, penalties, field goals blocked. We traded penalties at one point, had that block. Goal line goal stands. Line. So, fourth and goal. For the Knights, in the gun, same formation with two minutes to play in this fourth quarter. Give it to Klein, punch it in. High snap, Grace, Klein. Yeah, he's not going to get in. Did not get in. Yeah, it's number 76 again, Connor Douglas, junior, 6'4", 320, defensive lineman. That's a tough guy to block, and he showed it twice there at the goal line to keep the Knights out of the end zone. That's a big defensive stop there for the Columbus Grove defense that they got to feel pretty good about. Well, you know, you, you know, to your earlier point about uh, it'd be easy to pack it in. Well, the same applies for for Columbus Grove. Right. You know, they're up 31 nothing at one point. It'd be easy for them to quit playing hard. So it's good to see uh, Connor Douglas and that defensive unit still out there performing and, and, and giving effort at a high level. So the Columbus Grove varsity offense back on the field, especially packed up you know, at your own two-yard line here. You want to make sure you don't give up a safety or anything like that. So Renner in the shotgun. A.J. Schaefer lined up as a wing with Barraza deep in the backfield. So they'll send out an offensive lineman with three seconds on the play clock. Barraza bounces it outside, and he's in the open field. Oh, my. Trent Barraza has a couple of guys to beat. Still on his feet. Oh, nice cutback cut here. Gets it down wow. to the 35-yard line. So the quick math on that is 48, 15. What is that, 65, 63-yard run there for Barraza? It was a lot. You know, I, I thought they were more in short yardage formation once once Barraza gets out here in the open field. And I like the forearm uh, straight arm he gives here and then cuts it back. Yeah, it's a nice cutback here in the open field. He's brought down, but... He scampers for a long run. Trent Barraza is going to have a lot of rushing yards yeah, here. Yeah, he's pushing 200. As Renner is going to take the knee. And Columbus Grove going to be content to run out the clock. Go home. Go home. That's not how we act. So Trent Barraza, 213 yards on the ground, Ned Steck Schulte tells us. Ten carries. That's a pretty good average. That's good. That's going to help your that's average quite a bit, <laughs> that's, huh? That's uh, that's going to look like a good good night on the stat sheet. As Absolutely. I want to say uh, Ned Stexel, the, uh provides us with stats. He does them for all the Northwest Conference teams, and uh, they are well done, very well done, very complete. It uh, really helps all of us, and not just. Uh, well, it, it know, makes, it easy, coaches, to, but makes it easy to brag on kids when you know how many touchdowns they've rushed for or Trent Barraza has 213, 213 yards tonight. Well, well, that'll do it. Columbus Grove victorious over Crestview, 31-6. to We'll head down to the field, catch up with Columbus Grove head coach Andy Schaefer when we return. Hawker Drywall scoreboard says 31-6. Grove victorious over Crestview tonight here on WOSN. Back here at Crestview, wrapping up a 31-6 victory for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs over the Crestview Knights. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Andy Schaefer. And Andy, before the game, you told us you guys wanted to play kind of the same style you played last week against Lipsick. Uh, mission accomplished there? Yeah, I think so. I, I think our offensive line did a nice job of making some holes uh, up front and, and finishing blocks. And I like the way our running backs ran tonight. They ran pretty pretty powerful. Uh, a few things that we got to work out in the pass game, but offensively I liked it. And then defense is still playing strong. Trenton Barraza, 10 carries, 213 <laughs> yards, uh, a couple of touchdowns, a, a pretty good night for a sophomore. S speed helps. Speed helps. So, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, I'm sure like he would give credit to the line because they were making some, some big holes. And we weren't doing that earlier in the season. I mean, he could have had that chance earlier. But, uh, you know, those guys stepped up and did their job. So at this point in the season, you know, everybody wants to be, you know, 
getting towards their peak uh, as we as we reach the the playoff chase. Do you feel like you guys are getting better every not, week? Uh, yes, getting better. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask no, if no. we're at the peak. We're, no, we're not even close to being at the peak, but uh, we're definitely getting better. I see improvement, uh, but just like I told you pre-interview, there's things to work on for sure. Uh, defensively, uh, you brought a lot of guys back on that side of the football. Uh, how do you assess their performance tonight, and, and how do you feel about them on that side of the ball? They're good, you know, and, and we had to mix in some other guys. We actually had some ankle issues uh, tonight. Uh, the ground was a little little rocky, let's put it like that, but uh, um, n nothing major, but we did rotate some guys in just to make sure that everybody stayed healthy, and it was nice to see some of those second guys get in and make plays. Well, Andy, uh, congratulations on the win. Best of luck down the road, and uh, enjoy this one. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's Columbus Grove head coach Andy Schaefer joining us here at Crestview as the Bulldogs victorious 31-6 to over the, the Knights. Uh, I'm Gary Seawright, joined alongside Scott Nurse once again. And, Scott, uh, it's time to name our Stolly Hustle Award winner, and I, I think there's an obvious choice. Yeah, I think it was pretty obvious. Trenton Barraza, as you mentioned, 213 yards, 10 carries, and he was fantastic. Three touchdowns, I mean, just uh, ran over everybody. And, and as Coach said, Speed helps. Yeah, ran over people, ran away from people. Yep. He got that that pitch shot at the end of the first half that he almost took. When, when he, he's one of those players that when he gets the football, you kind of hold your breath there it's for a exciting. moment. It's exciting, right. No doubt about it. So Trent Barraza, our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. For more of our Stolly Hustle Award winners, check out the WOSN YouTube page. So that'll do it here from this Northwest Conference matchup. Columbus Grove takes down Crestview 31-6 for our fantastic WOSN crew. And Scott Nurse, I'm Garrett Seawright, saying so long, and we'll catch you next time right here on WOSN.